okay let me check with her and get back to it or uh, uh, have you guys subscribed to our channel ml foundations if not please do subscribe yeah. like share uh, and comment it's like one of the youtubers one of the ah uh, yeah <laughs> so just less like we we are also running that youtube right so uh, okay we, we have that copyrights to say that statements okay so let me let me just start at uh, diagonalization of hermitian matrices uh, from week 5 because see uh, if i if you don't know that if you guys don't know that if i talk about week 6 uh, singular value decomposition you will be like maybe you will just leave the session right after 10 minutes okay yeah so i don't want that so i will start at what all contents is necessary to understand this particular uh, week 6 uh so this is the very first time i am using black screen to so there are no reasons just i wanted to try the black screen also so is my screen visible yes sir yeah. do i have a background noise or is it okay uh do you have any background noise from my side no sir no 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 sir. no right okay so yeah youtube link is already provided i will add the, the youtube link in the calendar after the session okay uh, let us just quickly recall uh, what is hermitian matrix is okay so what is Her hermitian matrix like so what kind of matrices are matrix. called hermitian matrices like if we take the conjugate like transpose is equal to its um, Conjugate transpose is equal to the matrix itself. Correct. So, kind of color sequence. Yeah. So we a transpose, which is a conjugate uh, transpose. Uh, a transpose, which is you can write it as a transpose whole bar or a bar whole transpose. Everything is set. So this is called conjugate transpose. So if this conjugate transpose is equals to A, the matrix, then those kind of matrices are called Hermitian matrices. And properties of this, what are the properties of Hermitian matrices? And sir, A, A must be a real square eigen, matrix. Real eigenvalues and uh, uh, correct. Eigenvalues are real. Right? Eigenvalues are real. Correct. The first property you might have learned uh, previous session is like uh, all the eigenvalues are. Its diagonal entry should be real. Uh, 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 yeah, diagonal entries. That is one good observation. All the eigenvalues are uh, real. Maybe you can write that also. All diagonal entries. Entries uh, are real. Okay. What is there? Uh, independent eigenvectors for every eigen, like dist for uh, distinct eigenvalues we have distinct correct. eigenvectors. So, so if I have uh, distinct eigenvalues, uh, maybe I should write it like uh, uh, the eigenvectors corresponding. Corresponding. To distinct eigenvalues are orthogonal. So orthogonal we mean again. So it's like if I have two eigenvectors xi and xj, the dot product between them is zero. For i not equals to a, the dot product is zero. So these are few uh, properties of uh, Hermitian matrices. And after Hermitian matrices, we have talked about uh, unitary matrices. Right. Now, what hello, are sir. unitary matrices? Uh, hello. 
any doubt sir uh, uh, sir uh, in case of hermitian matrices uh, mm-hmm. matrices must be a square matrix uh, yes right okay if it is rectangular then transpose won't be in the same dimension right if m cross n is taken transpose it becomes yeah, right. n cross n. that doesn't yeah. make sense so okay. so uh, what are unitary matrices now so hermitian matrices are conjugate transpose being the same uh, matrix so unitary matrices yeah, unit. they are like orthogonal complex matrices or okay. uh, yeah their conjugate transpose is equal to like in inverse of inverse of, yes. Yes. of the matrix so so you can you can talk like this so if if i have some matrix u and its conjugate transpose u star if this u star is being equals to u inverse sir you uh, giving this pdf document at end of the session which one yeah um... the discussion sheets whatever you are writing ha huh. will you be giving to us of course right the whatever session i took those are all being uploaded right yes uploaded that's what i want to confirm it this time also we'll be doing that yeah 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 of course right thank you sir see if i took black screen that doesn't mean i will not share this i will do the same okay right right okay okay so this this i can rewrite it as uh, u star u is equals to identity and also i can write u u star okay so when i take a matrix and i take that matrix product with its complex tran- uh, conjugate transpose if i am getting an identity matrix so this is an identity matrix okay so such kind of matrices are called uh, unitary matrices and even unitary matrices have some properties you might have seen this also so i'm just writing those because i just wanted to give uh, this to you as a short notes okay so what are the what are the properties you know so those who have watched the lecture you might have known no right so one what, what is the first property that the unitary matrix satisfy uh, it's orthogonal uh, i don't i don't remember the exact properties okay uh, maybe the one vector remains same uh, actually the okay. value of eigen values is one correct correct so one one very important thing you should always remember is whatever the eigen values eigen values of unitary matrix uh, eigen values of unitary matrix uh, matrices will be either plus 1 or minus 1 okay so interesting can't be you know zero. it can't be zero sir no okay no See, if you know it that can be complex, right? Complex, and then if we have to find the like the length of the complex number, it comes to one. Right? No, no. Okay. No. Okay. Eigen values of a unitary matrix are real, and that too, they they will be either plus one or minus one. Okay. Okay. This has a solid proof. Uh, professor has proved in the lecture also. I can prove, but I don't want to waste much time here. No, no, sir. Uh, means fine. it has okay. absolute value one, uh, not exactly minus one or plus one, right? Absolute value one implies this only. So you can talk it so more it, than it, it. It can be complex values also. Uh, it can be re, uh, real values only. It can be complex also. That I, is why absolute value is one or minus one. Eigen values are always real, no? Huh? I think for um, Hermitian matrices they are real. Yes, for a, a, a unitary matrices. Um, Because I, the last time someone anyway. taught us, I like I wrote it down. It it could be complex as well. That's what they taught us. I don't know who who taught us. Sir, uh, in the lecture, professor has already also told this okay, that it okay. can be complex also. Oh okay. 
Okay, that is why uh, it is absolutely. Let, let me recheck that. Okay. I think only for the similar matrix, eigenvalues are real. Huh? Uh, maybe uh, I think uh, for real mat real unitary matrices it will be plus four or minus one. I will, I will just recheck this. Do not worry. L let it be mod lambda only. Absolute value is one. Okay. So whatever the eigen value you are going to get, the length of that eigen value, uh, the absolute value of the eigen value is one. Property one you corrected, sir. Mm -hmm. Sir, the the length or the value or like um what is it exactly see i i, I has i i so what is mod i mod i it could be under root negative one then yes Mod i is under root negative minus one. A plus or minus i? No, sorry, mod i don't know. I don't know. Mod. <clears throat> okay, let me let me just just quickly. Sir, I think the way we calculate like uh, for complex number is like calculating the norm of a vector. That's how we calculate it. Ah, uh, that's how we calculate, right? Yeah, and it comes out to be one for a. Uh, orthogonal matrix mm -hmm. so see when when we compute uh, like if i talk i can't talk like mod i i should talk like norm i and this will become zero plus one square and it will become one so if lambda is i then that means uh, the absolute value of that particular lambda is one okay uh, if you are that that confused, at least for real case, uh, you can be sure that it will be for unitary matrices, it will be plus or minus one. And for complex uh, cases, the absolute value is measured in terms of norms. Okay, you have to take the norm of it. And... Okay. So. I'll just check this once more. So that is how you should uh, check in this particular case. Okay, the second property, uh, you can think of it, the length is unchanged. Like, even though you do u times of some vector, so if you see what I mean is, if you see the norm of ux, this will be equal to norm of x. Okay, so whatever the length of the vector is there, even though you multiply a unitary matrix to that particular vector and compute the norm, even then also the length, the length or the norm won't change. This referred to as length is unchanged. So that is there and proofs for all these things are given in the lecture i don't want to repeat the proofs here and again uh, the third property stays the same uh, the eigenvector so let me just take that whatever this is there the unitary matrices also it will hold eigenvectors corresponding to distinct eigenvalues are orthogonal to each other. These are uh, some properties we have seen. And maybe uh, at the last lecture, uh, in the la uh, at the end of the lecture, I might have told uh, something about the connection between a Hermitian matrix and an unitary matrix and a diagonal matrix. So the connection is basically which I am going to talk uh, for the rest of the lecture, which is A U U star. Okay. So this is the connection where this A is Hermitian matrix. And 
and u is unitary matrix and this this symbol this diagonal matrix okay. so writing hermitian matrix as the product of unitary with the diagonal with u star is called diagonalization okay so that is the next topic i'm going to discuss so how do i sir diagonalize yeah will it be will it be possible through an example explaining quickly if it does not take too much time it will just help example reinforce the concept what? of for hermitian and uh, unitary matrix acha for for hermitian and unitary matrix eh? yeah we just want uh, for hermitian it is very easy to write down i can write for hermitian but the uh, unitary takes some time i guess okay so i can write so what you want is for hermitian what you want is this is the prime condition so for this keep mm. uh, the diagonals as reals so some 1 10 and mm. whatever you take it here so uh, take the complex conjugate here so if i take okay. some uh, some imaginal number c 1 plus so I, 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 have, i have to take c bar here. so all the matrices of the form like this are hermitian so for example we, if i take c as 1 plus i this will be 1 minus i 10 okay this is an hermitian matrix you can check how uh, you can the conjugate it. would be again same uh, so the conjugate is uh, the conjugate is 1 1 minus i 1 uh, plus i and this is 10 and the conjugate transpose will again you take the transpose of it so this will become 1 minus i 10 so this and this both are equal okay so hermitian is easy but unitary you have to do uh, some stuff you have to find the inverse of it and you have to check and i think uh, lecture in lecture sir has given the one example i guess right so lectures shayad koi sun raha ho okay uh, i think uh, even unitary matrices have uh, some simple thing where you can you can create actually where when the length of each column vector should be 1 okay and also yeah the length of each column vector should be 1 it's like an orthogonal matrix right? sir pairwise the vector should be orthogonal right uh, pairwise sir uh, uh, pairwise it should be orthogonal so, so one simple example is uh, uh 1 by root 2 Minus one by root two. Uh, minus one by root two. One by root. Two. Okay. I think this is this is a so unitary no, matrix. Uh, values need not be uh, complex. I mean, they can be complex, right? Ah, uh, they can be. They can be complex also. But uh, as I said, uh, okay. the length of the vector should be one. Okay. Okay. So if I have I. I have I here. Okay, what will be the length of this? So this will be again one by two whole square plus one by two whole square. Length is one. So it will be one. And. Uh, Uh, the so product should the, be the uh, the length of the column should be one, right? Yes, yes. So one by root two plus why one, one by root two? It should be iota upon root two, right? One that becomes two, one, right? That becomes one, right? Yeah, that's what you written, sir. It's iota. Oh, okay, is that iota? It's looking as one. Fine. 
So, uh, sir, but it will be... become zero, right? Yeah, iota score is minus one, no? So zero. Sir, but why did you take iota? It's in the matrix. It's just uh, numbers. I mean, it's not. Uh... No, it's iota in the first column. Look, so if if you want, uh, uh, what I said is, if you want uh, complex, also you can have unitary matrices can have complex entries. Sir, when we take the norm of a vector, right? We uh -huh. We don't do the inner product inside the square root, right? We just uh, correct, correct. square the see, vector. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm, see, where will this vector be? 1 by root 2, comma. So this is i and this is real. So okay. this will be. This is where it will be, right? 1 by root 2, 1 by root yeah. 2. This is i by root 2. Right. So the length yeah. of this vector will be 1 by root 2 whole square plus 1 by root 2 whole square, which is for. So the length will be complex inner product of row, column 1 with itself. Complex? Inner product of column 1 with itself. Ah, okay. ah no, right. But it will be complex in our product. Ah, see if I if I okay uh, maybe if I want just the length of this okay, you have the very standard uh, thing right. So this is a complex thing. So what I have to do is uh, if I say this as v, so this will be v bar transpose v. Right. What will be v bar transpose? One by root two. And minus so one, 1 by root 2 and minus i by root 2, right? Transpose. And this v is 1 by root 2, i by root 2. Now, what this will become? This will become 1 by root 2 whole square minus i by root 2 whole square. And this will become 1 by root 2 plus 1 by root 2. Sorry, 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 i square will become minus 1 and minus of minus plus so it will become half and it will become 1 so you can Good. you don't even need this uh, uh, visualization at all so you can use the very standard uh, method to compute the length of a vector Okay. Length of a complex vector. Okay, this this is one, and the other thing, uh, th I think this will also change because dot product with this with this should be zero. One by root two some x by root two plus minus i by root two. Second column, first element is minus i by root. Oh. Minus i by root. Yes. Then it will work, yeah. Yeah. No, no. See, again, I, I'm taking dot product, okay? So I want to take uh, 1 by root 2, i by root 2, dot product with uh, dot product with some x by root 2, 1 by root 2. So if I'm taking dot product in a complex thing, very you should be very careful you you just have to take complex conjugate out of it. yes sir but and minus one will become plus one so one by root two and this will be yes. minus i by root two so i have to take complex conjugate no? conjugate transpose no? so if i look at the trans conjugate it will be 1 by root 2 and minus i by root 2 and transpose will be minus i by root 2 and it will be multiplied with x by root 2 and 1 by root 2 and this will give you some x by 2 minus i by 2 so x should be i so this is where you you you, you will go wrong so when you forget to take the conjugate transpose you will go wrong if you just simply take the transpose uh, while you compute 
the dot product between two complex vectors then there is a very high chance this minus will kill you so, but minus i will also work sir it will also give norm one so this will give norm one but dot product with the first it won't give right zero okay for okay so the or th these two vectors should be orthogonal to each other right? yes 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 got it so this is a unitary matrix okay even uh, the previous example which i have given minus 1 and 1 so this is also unitary matrix see that is what for for building unitary matrix maybe i will write each column vector for building or constructing constructing unitary matrix so if you want to construct a unitary matrix each column vector length should be equal to 1 and that is the first thing and the second thing and every column vector is orthogonal to each other oh uh, sir in the above example or could you just uh, show where you have taken the conjugate transpose actually the calculation part here So if I want to compute the length of this vector, I have to take the complex conjugate uh, conjugate transpose and then multiply it with normal vector. So this is actually norm square. Oh, uh, sir, is it the same for dot product also? That is what it is, right? See, dot product is nothing but. See how no, do no, you I define the norm? Actually, uh, sir, not I'm, no, sir, I'm sir, not about the norm. Norms, the dot yeah. product that you have taken, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah, sir, pairwise, sir, pairwise. Pairwise only. See, norm so, and dot product is... are interconnected. Okay, norm v uh, or norm v square is actually v dot v. So, we don't have doubt about this one norm we doubt about uh, the dot product the finding of x that you have taken uh, to prove uh -huh. that these are orthogonal there uh -huh. there why have you taken the ortho uh, uh, conjugate na? conjugate yes exactly uh -huh. conjugate so, so when you do u dot v what what do you do actually u dot v you should do u bar transpose v if there are two vectors u dot v if i have to take the dot product between them that is how it is defined right in complex uh, spaces if you want to define so the dot product, dot product ah this is complex dot product so you can't directly take u transpose v so that will lead you to wrong answer you know uh, uh, this was uh, okay, okay uh, that is what that is why i bring this graph into the picture See, when whenever uh, there is a vector in complex space, the y-axis is complex i. This is represented as i, and this is the real line. Okay. So if I talk, uh, if I say that there is a vector one i by root two. So one comma i by root two. So where will this one comma i by root two be on this particular x on this plane? First, first quadrant. Two, three, and so on. Even this also has one, two, three, and so on. But these are i's. So one, okay, maybe one comma i. I will just see one comma. So one comma i 
is here yes agreed yes sir and, and, the, the, orth uh, and the orthogonal will be minus 1 comma 1 or 1 comma minus 1 1 comma minus 1 okay uh, before going to that what is the length of this one comma i vector root two sir root two how see if i if i okay you say that the length is actually the norm norm square but norm square is actually 1 comma i dot 1 comma i now how should i multiply these two vectors such that i will get the correct maybe the true two so if i if i directly do whatever uh, is there in the real spaces what should i do i'll just simply do 1 times 1 plus i times i that will give me 1 minus okay plus i square i square is minus 1 1 minus 1 which is 0 and is this correct no no right no so so dot product between two vectors even though they are equal or unequal in complex space if i am doing the dot product between vector u and vector v i i should not consider u transpose v simply i have to consider the conjugate transpose of the first vector and then multiply it with the vector v and See, this will be the absolute value right which one this the length of one comma e one comma i sorry one comma i yeah. huh. so that is like finding the absolute value of one comma i uh so what do you mean by see length is different from absolute value okay that is for one plus i i think uh huh maybe yeah the absolute value of one plus i is this Okay, sir. So why we are always conjugate and transport doing the first vector one? So that, that is that is how we get the lengths in complex spaces. So usually if I if I am in the real space, one comma one, how far uh, one comma one is from zero comma zero? If it is real, real. One unit. Root two. One unit. Root two root 2 no. sir. root, root two. 2 so it is root 2 far so even in the complex space when i am getting zero that means both the, uh, the vector is a zero vector right Th that is how norm will be zero only if the inside is zero norm x will be zero if and only if x is zero so if I, if you are getting zero that implies uh, whatever the vector you are taking is a zero vector but i didn't take a zero vector in the complex space i have taken the vector one comma i and this is mis mismatching right like i'm getting a contradiction and if i use the same definition what i use for the real case i'm getting the wrong answers right length is not properly defined so that is why uh, we take conjugate of the first vector then you'll get the correct Lens. So, sir, uh, the final product will be minus i1 into 1 and i, right? Which one? Uh, here only, yes. Ah, this will be, this will become, okay, okay, I will not remove this, let it be there. 
So this will become one i. So one i dot one i, and for this vector, I have to take the conjugate transpose. So if I take, if I write the conjugate, it will be one minus i. If I do the transpose, it will be one minus i rho s, and this is multiplied with one i. Okay, sir. So you are going to get one plus. So this is square. So this will be one minus i square. So you are going to get one plus one, which is two. So the squared length is two. Therefore, the length will be length will be root two. Okay, this is correct. This is how you should do. So the dot product in complex spaces. We have to do it like this. Okay. So that is what I did here. So if I do that, uh, if I take i here instead of uh, one, here also it, it will come as i only because I will take the this is this is what I do. If I do this, I will get x as i only. Okay, is this clear? What? Yes, sir. So never uh, forget about this, because there will be lots and lots of problems where this minus and plus will play a major role in complex spaces. Okay, so that is uh, unitary, but I uh, okay. Sir, so, hmm. sir, the uh, Hermitian and real symmetric matrices we can. Just find out by visually examining it. Hermitian and real symmetric. Yeah, yeah, that is what uh, I said, right? Hermitian unitary. and yes, sir. Huh. But unitary and orthogonal matrix, uh, it is not possible to visually see unless you calculate. Ah, that is what. That is why I gave you shortcuts, right? If you have, if I have given you some matrix and you just have to check whether it is unitary or not, you just check these two. Like whether every column vector length is actually equals to one or not. If one of the column having the uh, length as some two or something not equals to one, then straight away you can uh, say that it is not unitary. And the second condition is uh, you just have to take uh, the orthogonal orthogonality property and. Uh, do the dot product between two column vectors, and it should uh, give you zero. Okay, this is how you can check directly. Instead of uh, computing u inverse and uh, u star, and then checking u star whether that u star is equals to u inverse or not, it's a very big process. So till three cross three, u inverse looks easy, but if it is four cross four, what will you do? It will be slightly difficult right to sir it. even in 3 cross 3 we are facing difficulty i am facing difficulty sir okay 3 cross 3 is uh, if I, no 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 i don't want to discuss right now see uh, i will uh, i urge you to uh, there are many you you can just ask chat gpt it will give you the method okay it is very straightforward it just uh, requires some cofactors and determinant that, that, that's it you just have to understand what is cofactor and what is determinant. Real points, sir. You can also do u u star equal to i. Hmm? U u star equal to i. Ah, yeah. you can ah you can also do that u u star is equal to i. Ah, uh, whether it is giving you i or not, that also you can do. But uh, sometimes this will help you a lot. See, if it is three cross three, you have only three uh, column vectors, and you just have to verify their lengths. As well as just some three combinations, so one, two, two, three, and one, three uh, dot products. Sir, can it be possible that uh, all the three columns are multiplied with the same scalar, and that will that be considered as unitary? How how it will be unitary? See, if one one is a scalar multiple of the other, the length will differ, right? Exactly, sir. So that uh, won't be unitary. That will be a that won't be unit. unitary right away. 
okay so okay uh, let's keep unitary aside yeah let's talk about oh, this thing sir hmm. sir for checking orthogonality uh, hmm. uh, two column vectors are orthogonal or not hmm. uh, we must take uh, uh, u uh, column of transpose conjugate transpose dot uh, second column or simply just take it's a dot, dot again see okay. that is what i i seriously uh, feel for this see two vectors if you are multiplying two vectors or if you are taking dot product then we will show it as dot okay, okay. so if you are multiplying matrices to matrices there will not be any dot in between that so it's, it, this okay. is just the product of two matrices this is row matrix multiplied with this column matrix yeah yes sir uh, yes okay. so so sir so, while checking this uh, we take a square right norm square or uh, we don't take under root or because the uh, like what checking of uh, while checking the norm uh, we we take the under root right we can't just uh, like take a square and remove the root i mean that will not be give us correct answer no oh but uh, for unitary i was talking about length to be equal to 1 right oh yes uh, so even though you take square or uh, you will not take square that doesn't matter you will get one only here okay so because square root you should if you want to get the length to be 1 the squared length also should be 1 one. 1 one. One square is equal to 1 ah uh, so for unitary checking you no need to do the square root and all you will directly get 1 if it is 1 then the length is 1 automatically if it is if you are not getting 1 then definitely it is not unitary okay okay uh let us uh, talk about this thing this is this is the important thing not that how do you uh, write hermitian matrix or how do you decompose hermitian matrix into product of three matrices where one matrix is unitary matrix one is diagonal matrix and the other is just the complex the conjugate transpose of unitary matrix so this is conjugate transpose of u okay so this is called diagonalization let me write it here analyzation of hermitian so for this you need uh, the previous things so you need to know what is hermitian matrix uh, you need to know what is unitary matrix that's it that is sufficient for you okay so what this uh, diagonalization of hermitian matrices thing is this actually states that you can actually diagonalize hermitian matrix diagonalize meaning you can actually write hermitian matrix in this particular way the product of three matrices u times this uh, what is the symbol name i forgot the symbol name i was trying to recollect but i am not able to get this lambda sir that is lambda? Capital, capital lambda sir capital lambda okay maybe yeah. lambda i will just call it lambda so u multiplied with this uh, diagonal matrix lambda times u star if i can write and no not if i can write i can able i can able to write all hermitian matrices in this particular way okay and this is what uh, we have to show also actually we can show that uh, hermitian matrix is un this is called unitarily diagonalizable so unitarily diagonalizable meaning using uh, the unitary matrix and the diagonal matrix uh, i can diagonalize so for this the uh, u should contain the eigen only the eigen vectors as columns so and mm -hmm. lambda should contain the eigen values uh, okay so but anyway prashant has uh, so, so for other cases it is not possible sir told this yeah see this will eventually convert to that so always you will get the eigen vectors directly okay so this has very very good proof and this this is called scarce theorem 
where this theorem proves this particular thing. Every Hermitian matrix is actually unitarily diagonalizable. So I will not go much detail uh, in the proof. Okay, I will see if I if I wish or if you wish, I will just do the proof also. But uh, this what this Karst theorem says is any unfrozen matrix A is similar to an upper triangular matrix. So I hope everyone know what is this upper triangular matrix. Right? Yes, sir. Below, uh, below elements are zero. I think. That is right. called upper triangular. Right. So I will have some non zero entries. Some non zero entries. And these all will be zeros. So the below matrix, so the uh, all the entries below the diagonal uh, are zero. That is called upper triangular matrix. Okay, some non-zero entries. So this is this is a upper triangular matrix. So what this uh, says is, uh, what this theorem sta sta states is, I can actually write any matrix. You give me any matrix, and cross and matrix. I can actually come up with a similar upper triangular matrix. When I say similar, what does this mean? So when do I say A and B, two matrices A and B are similar to each other? They will have same eigenvalues. Mm -hmm. But what is the P D P So so I'll just write here. Similar matrices. Uh, A and B are similar if A can be written as a matrix P, B, B transpose. Okay. So, so P inverse. Ah, sorry. Correct. So this is, so if I can write A as P times B times some P inverse or some matrix P, then I call, I can say A and B are similar to each other. And what is the importance of this? What are the properties that similar matrices hold? So similar matrices will have same rank, same eigenvalues, and same determinant, same trace. So whatever the matrix A has, the rank, eigenvalues, determinant, trace, all will be same for that particular matrix B. So B also will have this, the rank that A has. Eigenvalues also will be the same. Determinant will also be the same and trace will also be the same. Okay. So those are called similar matrices. Now, uh, what I say is, uh, this Karst theorem says is, any matrix, so you mean any N cross N matrix, I can come up with, I can write that matrix A as, something multiplied by some upper triangular matrix 
Listo. Okay. So if I can write, so this is n cross n. And this is the upper triangular matrix. Okay. And yeah, this theorem states this. And the proof of this is like uh, in lectures are has taken uh, for the case of n is equals to 3. Very simple case. And he has proved it and he has done and also he proved in a while in the process he proved that this becomes unitary so do i have to do the proof will kill a lot of time no sir uh, i don't think so uh, maybe you just play the video and in the video if you want proof proof is there in the lecture so you just go back to the video and you can just check. But I will take an example and we will just try to uh, uh, convert one matrix A. We will try to convert it into the upper triangular matrix. We will try to come up with U and T. OK? Yes, sir. Exercises are more important. Correct. Proofs, uh, okay. proofs are not asked in the exams. Uh -huh. Correct. So that is why I, even I don't want to uh, spend uh, more time on proving because sir has already done the proofs. If sir has not done, I would have interested to do that. But he has already done in the lecture. You just go back and just watch the proof. Okay. But uh, sir, proof of just... unitary diagonalizability. Sir, proof of? Sir, proof of unitary diagonalizability. Hermitian thing. No? He oh. done that also, right? No, that is called spectral theorem. Any Hermitian matrix is unitarily diagonalized. So that is spectral theorem, and we will come to that. But before that, let me take uh, random, uh, random, or uh, if you guys have any matrix, which should be three cross three, okay? Even two cross two is okay, but not four cross four. Sir, the matrix from exam, sir. From exam? Quiz exam. Quiz, quiz one, if I can tell you the uh, matrix. Uh -huh. You can uh, tell me from quiz one, but I won't be giving you quiz two. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, meanwhile, uh, you just search. But uh, for everyone to solve, let me discuss how, how we can uh, get there. Okay. So that Sir, is, I just wanted needed. to add a doubt that uh, this T, which is an upper triangular matrix, so mm -hmm. all similar matrices will be upper triangular or for only this particular oh, Hermitian? No, no, I, I just said any N cross N matrix, all square matrices, any square matrix, I can write, I can come up with an upper triangular matrix, which is similar to that. So, so, okay, maybe one note is not Hermitian, not only Hermitian. Okay, this Kurz theorem holds for any square matrix, n cross n square matrix, any n cross n square matrix can be, uh, I can write that particular uh, square matrix as u times t uh, u t u star where u is the unitary matrix and t is the upper triangular matrix okay is that okay yes sir. so we'll go to hermitian and that is called spectral theorem as of now i am just at uh, square matrices and these are the steps you need to follow steps to all maybe i will write first so the first step what you have to do is you have to uh what i have to do 
you have to compute so if you, you have the a with you right uh, you have the matrix a so the compute the eigen values of a okay so compute the eigen values of a and take one eigen value uh, let it be lambda 1 let's say say lambda 1 lambda 1 is the eigen value and uh, corresponding uh, eigen vector we call this as I'll use prof so z1 is corresponding eigen vector so you have to find corresponding eigen vector you compute the eigen values of a so we have only uh, the information we have is we have only a we have only matrix a okay and from that you can actually compute the eigen values and if you get some two three eigen values take one eigen value lambda lambda one and find the corresponding eigen vector of that lambda one and i say z1 then what you have to do is so now z1 is a uh, set so this is a set this is a set which contains only one vector and if i have uh, my space to be and cross n okay so rn i have to have n minus 1 more vectors to create a basis so the second step is you have to create a basis so i have one vector with me and the other vector uh, other orthogonal vectors i need right in order to create a basis so that one is a set and I say extend Z1 to some Z1 U and V, okay, such that such that norm Z1 is equals to norm u is equals to norm v is equals to one and maybe maybe i will call z prime z prime so the lengths of each vector should be one and uh, they should be orthogonal so so i'm creating an orthonormal basis yes. so z1 dot u and z z prime one dot v and u dot v should be zero so what is u v so i have to come up with uh, two other vectors uh, in order to create a basis so this this actually acts as a basis or the normal basis for r3 so I'm I'm I am giving only uh, the step to solve for the matrix uh, so, with three cross. Uh, hmm? So there could be multiple uh, eigenvectors. There? There can be multiple eigenvectors. Why are you only taking one? See, that is so, the step. This that is that is how the process goes. If you if you, if I wanted to write my a as u times t u t u star this is this is what i have to follow okay i took one so one we can value. take any one ah any one you have anyone. to do it three times with one one uh again vector right no no need no 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 only one but, time but oh. for uh, uh by this we get you will get only the first row of uh, the matrix right 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 I, I didn't finish right 
Uh, yes, yes, no, no, sir. Uh, um, I was just clearing it. I am saying uh -huh. like uh, uh, the finding two other orthogonal vectors is a bit uh, mathematical uh -huh. task. So, is okay. there any is there uh -huh. any other way to get those two vectors? Okay. Uh, good. Good. Uh, that is called Gram Smith uh, process. Yes, it's a lengthy process actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so. Uh, Okay, I will just stop this sharing. I had a very good uh, uh, slides for this Gram Smith. Uh, I have very maybe maybe that will give you. Uh, more interpretation of. How to how you can easily identify the other two vectors. You don't need to remember the formulas. Just a second. That is required. So, in order to solve the problem, that is required. Yes, that is why. Okay. Uh, okay. Is my new screen visible? Yes. So, uh, Okay, let me talk about Gram Smith uh, for a while. So, this Gram Smith method or theorem or process. So, this will help us. So, uh, to extend or to construct. An orthonormal basis. Okay, so this will help us to construct orthonormal basis. So, what do I mean by orthonormal basis? So, I will have. So, first of all, I hope everyone know what is a basis. Let uh, V1, V2, Vn be a basis of Rn. Okay. So when do I call this particular basis as an orthonormal basis? So all the lengths of uh, each vector in the basis have one and vi dot vj is zero uh, if i not equals to zero okay so all the vectors in that particular set should be orthonormal so orthonormal meaning the below things so the length of each vector should be one and dot product between any two vectors is zero or the normal and if that forms a basis so what what is basis all are li linearly independent of the span of that it uh -huh. will be equal to rn so so if i take the linear combination of these vectors it will actually yeah. span all uh, whole Rn, so the n, n dimensional real space it will span. So that is called orthonormal basis, and this Gram Smith process will help you to construct an orthonormal basis. So if you have one vector with you, so if you have V1 or U1 with you, maybe I'll just stop with V. So if I, if you have V1 using V1. You can construct V2 and using V1, V2, using V1, V2, you can construct V3 and using V1, V2, V3, you can construct V4 
okay so like this so this is a process right so it's like it will construct if you have if you have given one ortho normal vector and using that single ortho normal vector uh, okay maybe a uh, single uh, vector it will generate the n minus 1 uh, vectors which have length 1 and also orthogonal to each other so this is the method which is called as gram smith uh, method and how this uh, how this is being constructed is uh, i think uh, most of you have seen the process i guess so if i have any basis okay so v1 v2 vn so you can create any basis right if if i have v1 as or if you don't don't know how to create you just take if you have v1 you just take e2 e3 and so on en i hope everyone knows what is ei it's a vector where i th entry is 1 and all others are 0 but sir here Uh, we have only v1 hmm. so why we are taking e2 e3 also that will that will form a basis right okay. right see well, you you should always understand that if i if i want to uh, span whole rn i need definitely n vectors n yeah. linearly independent vectors hmm. right yes, so in my basis i should have n vectors n linearly independent vectors correct all this e1 e2 to en are linearly independent to each other just make sure that your v1 is not one of the uh, eis okay okay so if it is uh, some e4 if v1 is e4 just take in place of e4 take e1 that's it okay you can actually come uh, you can actually randomly create a basis okay but it may not be the ortho normal basis okay okay and this will uh, instead of e2 uh, so even though you, you you can take e2 e3 uh, en but i will just simply say v2 v3 so you, you can come up with some basis uh, vectors uh, some vectors v2 v3 to vn such that v1 to vn forms a basis forms a basis or okay so if that is there then to create an ortho normal basis or the gram smith process what it says is so you take the first vector so first vector you just normalize it you just make the length of the vector to be equal to 1 so u1 is the first ortho normal vector which is v1 by norm you just divide it by norm now the length of if you see the length of u1 it will become 1 okay for the next uh, u2 so i will just write the formula first and then i will go to that uh, graphical interpretation why that is being true u2 is actually uh, i will simply say some e2 okay some 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 u v w some w two divided by norm w two, where that w two is v two minus v two dot u one. V two dot u one times one. okay so just 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 look at the formula and you can actually link this formula to projections i will i will just show you below and u3 is some w3 by norm w3 where that w3 is v3 minus v 
V3 minus uh, it should be V3 dot U1 times U1 minus V3 dot U2 times U2. So it goes like this. So now U3 so, and so on it goes. And then UN is actually some WN divided by norm WN, where that uh, WN will be VN minus VN dot U1 times U1 minus VN dot U2 times scalar actually. This will be a scalar and it, this will be a factor. So U2 and so on minus Vn dot Vn Un minus 1 Un minus 1. So this is how uh, now, now once you compute this now this U1 U2 Un is an orthonormal basis so it will be a orthonormal basis and why this is working uh, i will just show you now so to start with we it will be enough if we just have a set which spans it is spanning it need not yeah. be independent to each other it not be not basis it should be basis you should start with the basis okay sir okay so, so you just have to take some n linearly independent vectors okay sir uh, what is the importance of orthonormal basis like, uh, uh, like uh, in consideration uh, to normal basis i i was about to show you see uh, you have an orthonormal basis very well known orthonormal basis which is a standard basis So this this E1, E2 to En is an orthonormal basis. So you can check every uh, length of every vector is 1. And also every vector is uh, dot product with another vector, it will give me 0. So that's an orthonormal basis. Apart from that, if I have some other vector in place of E1, so that is what I'm going to show you now. So if you, if you have two vectors, which spans R2, OK? So this, this, this spans R2, U and U, U bar and V bar spans R2, right? They are linearly independent. Agreed? Are these two linearly independent? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. OK. And this will span R2? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, uh, if I say spanning R2, it is like alpha U bar plus beta V bar. And how do I represent this vector? No. Maybe this vector. How do I represent this vector using U bar and V bar? So what are alpha and beta? Will it be slightly difficult or easy? No, it's not that direct. OK, you can't directly say the values. When when your basis uh, vectors are not perpendicular to each other, so perpendicular to each other, I mean, if they are not orthogonal to each other, then writing the vectors, the other vectors, or spanning the other vectors is slightly difficult. Agreed? If my R2 basis is 1, 0, and 0, 1, and if my R2 basis is minus 1, 1 and 2, 1. So which 
basis is much preferable first one first one right so if i say this is some minus 3 comma 4 so using this basis you can directly write minus, minus three times uh, you can directly write down the alpha and beta right for this it will take some time correct you just have to write it into uh, it will create some system of two linear equations with two variables you just have to solve it and then you'll get alpha and beta i'm not denying that uh, it is uh, much more difficult but the point is having basis uh, vectors or the uh, having the basis vectors uh, vectors as orthogonal to each other it will help you a lot sir uh, this alpha and beta uh, how how do you show it on the graph like how is it shown it's not shown on the graph right i mean Why what does I... it mean exactly like some scalar but see this vector is just the combination of these two vectors, right? Some scalar combination of these two vectors, right? So yes. You have to identify that proper alpha that need to be multiplied to u and the proper beta that should be multiplied to v so that the corresponding vector will be like this. We'll change the direction and it will come like this. So you just have to find such alpha and beta. My point here is it will be slightly difficult if you have non perpendicular uh, vectors sitting in the basis sitting inside the basis okay no okay my point is if i have two vectors i can actually span every vector on this r2 plane spanning what do you, what do i mean by span All the possible linear combinations of the vectors. So all the possible. Uh, so I can I can I can span this vector, this white white vector. So this is a vector. Some k gap, k bar. I can write this k bar as some alpha times u bar plus some beta times v bar. I can write. As long as u bar and v bar forms a basis. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. What am I talking about? Are you guys confused or? Sir, so if any vector is we if we want to obtain any vector and mm. we are given any basis in R2, so mm. we can find that particular vector any vector using those any basis given yeah that is why it is called basis right basis will actually span every vector sitting inside that uh, space but they we need be... to know that what what final result we want that we need to know right and we, then we need to know the basis then we can find alpha and beta that is right. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So here you know the k bar, you know v bar and u bar. These are known to us. Okay. I mean, then only it will make sense, right? If uh -huh. we know, then otherwise it will it be incomplete information without. Right, these. right. See, this this is this is known, but writing this vector in terms of the basis. So why do I write in terms of basis? Okay, I'm getting so much of technical stuffs are coming here. See, already I have a vector. I can simply represent this vector. I know, as I said, minus 3, comma 4. Why do I need to represent this minus 3, comma 4 in terms of this u bar and v bar? No necessary, right? Okay, let me before talk about uh, this thing then. What is one? Where 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 are the vectors one zero and zero one like? 
x and y axis x and y axis and that too only unit length right yes sir yes uh, now using these two vectors i can enlarge this i can make this zero and i can enlarge this i can create this new vector if i want to create a vector this so i i just simply have to enlarge this and i have to make this zero right that is how i can create this vector using these two correct yes uh, and if i want some vector like this What should I do? I should enlarge this uh, both vector. X to, uh, both x and y. I should enlarge this y vector uh, to here and x vector to here. Then it will become this plus this. That will give me the final x number. So that is how uh, I will generate vectors using the basic vectors I have. The only two vectors which I have, I can generate every vector on R2. Okay. And this will give me the distance or the connection between the basis vectors and the vector, known vector. So you see, if this is the basis, I know this vector, this is one vector, green vector. And this is the another vector. And if I want to compare or project or do whatever between these two vectors, I can easily see that the length of red vector is larger compared to the length of uh, that green vector. Right? And also, I can easily see that uh, the both the vectors are on the first quadrant. Correct. Right. And also I can see what else I can see. I can project this onto this. So I can do the projection. And once I do the projection, I know straight away this point. Right. If my bases are this. Okay. Everything is dependent on basis. How you treat, and if you change the axis to u bar, if your x axis has moved to u bar, axis rotation, rotation of axis. This is this is very very critical uh, thing if you uh, talk about change of uh, translation of axis, change of axis. This is very crucial in complex analysis. Okay, so you should be used to this. So if I just change the axis to u bar, so this becomes my x axis. Now tell me what will be the basis? Will 0, 1, 1, 0 work? Or will 0, 1, 1, 0 be still be 0, 1, 1, 0? So previously this is 1, 0 and this is 0, 1. After changing this x-axis, this will become y-axis. The perpendicular one will become some y-axis. And this will be 0, 0 anyway. It will not be 0, 1. Ah, 0, it will 1. not be 0 and 1, right? Now what I did is, I made one of my u-bar, v-bar vectors. I made one of my u-bar as x-axis. I just rotated my x-axis. And now I wanted to see the things. And this will help in complex things. See, now as we are in real case, you can ask me why to translate and complicate the things. And this rotation, translation, scaling will help you understand the complex planes better. So sometimes we, OK, maybe I can bring this continuity, differentiability of some functions. You may not be easily seen on real plane. What we do is we translate this uh, particular function to the complex plane. Translation is done. And then, then if you need scaling, you will do the scaling and understand the continuity differentiability there. And you will project it back onto the real plane.
and this is some higher stuff which you don't need but this helps this is not this helps this is frequently used this rotation translation and all once you rotate now if you want to see the vectors other vectors everything is rotated now everything now k bar this minus 3 comma 4 is not minus 3 comma 4 any it will change to something else and every time you are uh, you compare with the real thing or the standard thing will be very very difficult every time coming back to 1 comma 0 and 0 comma 1 basis and how it is written and then bring, uh, looking at the connection between these two and then writing the vector is very very difficult and we can't do that with the given limited time so this this translation rotation is very very important and also if you have any vectors u bar and v bar if it can span r2 and it is very very important to note or to write each and every vector given in that in the form of alpha times u bar plus beta times v bar so this is important to know okay so now that i have given you this is important this u bar and v bar will span whole r2 but uh, writing them uh, getting the alpha and beta directly is very very difficult if i have u bar and if i have another vector which is perpendicular to u bar then i can easily write again that is what that is what translation means so we will make one vector sits on x axis and the other vector we will make this u bar to project onto this y and that is what this gram smith process does okay so what it does is you have this u bar and v, v bar with you it it forms a basis but u bar and v bar are not orthogonal to each other so that means the angle between them is not 90 so what i will do is i will just simply project v bar onto u bar and you know this projection things once you project v bar onto u bar you see the error vector is perpendicular to u bar whatever the error vector you see this is the error vector so this error vector is perpendicular to u bar now and then what we will do is we will just simply push that error vector slowly here if you push that what you will get is this this is one vector now and this is u bar is another vector which are perpendicular to each other and also see i'm just telling orthogonal <laughs> you can make orthonormal by just dividing it by norm u bar okay so this is what it does so it takes one vector it projects the other vector onto it and the projection vector is on u bar but the error vector will be perpendicular to u bar and we consider the error vector as the second vector for this and that will create an orthogonal basis so this u bar and this v bar minus u bar dot v bar divided by norm u bar whole square u bar this will create an orthogonal basis but in order to have orthonormal basis you just divide this by norm u bar once you divide this this will become ortho normal and this will be on this if you project now this will be now u bar uh, if u bar is an orthonormal uh, vector then norm u bar square will be one anyway and this will vanish off okay, this, this, okay, maybe i will write it below so this will this, this is an orthogonal basis if i say if u bar is 
or the normal or if u bar is a normal vector that is norm u bar is 1 then uh, I can van ignore this u bar and v bar minus u bar dot v bar u bar but this is ortho you will get the orthogonal uh, you will get the vector which is orthogonal to u bar but you don't know whether that is of length one or not what you do is you just divide it with that particular norm so that is what i have written above so the second vector second vector you just take v2 minus v2 dot u1 of u1 simply because i am not dividing it by norm u1 square because u1 is a norm u1 is 1 so you can ignore that you will get an another vector which is perpendicular to u1 but you may not get the uh, unit vector what you do is you just divide it by norm now you got uh, two different uh, vectors which are perpendicular to each other and also the length of each vector is 1. So you generate 2. So likewise, so this is uh, 2 vectors. These are orthonormal. So we divide it by norm of this whole thing. So this is orthonormal basis uh, not orthonormal uh, up to now this is orthonormal basis for r2 and you can extend the argument so this is how it will be so your u bar will be this side and your v bar minus u bar dot v bar divided by this will be this side and the angle between them is 90 they are orthogonal to each other now you can simply see is this the translation so this xy plane has just rotated some angle and now you can again so it's, a, it's just like uh, normal standard uh, so, so this u bar will be like 1 comma 0 1 comma 0 and this this side it will be like uh, 0 comma 1 now you can write it easy okay so, so so that is that is for 2 for 3 you will have now as you have two vectors it will create a plane it will span a plane already once you span the plane the third vector which we have some w some w bar that particular w bar will now this u u u bar v bar and w bar spans r3 because they are uh, they are not they are linearly independent to each other so they will span r3 but u bar and v bar are perpendicular to each other but w bar is not perpendicular to them but what you can do is you can use the gram smith uh, process again you just project w bar onto that particular plane you will have uh, that and this and then what you do is so so you just have to project it straight, straight projection. So if you just project it, this will be u bar, u1 bar plus v1 bar. So this is a sum vector. And we know v1 bar, okay, this is this 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 is not v1 bar. Maybe uh, maybe I will just call it as v1, v1 bar. And this says this is u1 bar. So now u1 bar plus v1 bar is this. So you know v1 bar the projection there, the projection here. It will just add the projections. If you know that uh, that u dash and v dash are of unit length, you will just simply ignore this, and we will have this. Now the error vector is perpendicular th to these two. Now the error vector will be w bar minus this thing, u bar dot w bar times u bar 
टू डैश बार माइनस वी डैश बार डब्ल्यू बार okay so so this gram smith process what it does is it will actually you it will take one vector it will just create a, a, another perpendicular vector on r2 another perpendicular vector which is perpendicular to the, these two vectors on r3 like this the fourth vector comes on r4 which is perpendicular to all these three and these three so hmm. so the, the red line is a projection projection of w vector ha huh, ha huh, the red this one the error vector so that is perpendicular to these two so so so, so that is what it will be perpendicular once you shift it here so you just shift it like this okay if the shifting happens like this it will come and finally what you will get is again you will have u dash bar v bar v dash bar and the third vector which you are going to get from grams with uh, process is this and which will be perpendicular to these two it may not be of unit length what you have to do is you have you just have to divide it by the norm of that and it will create third vector so, so now i'm like projecting the w vector on u and then uh, v both ha uh ha -huh, both and add the, okay that is the projection so so it will project on v on u but the the projection actually happens on the plane right the w yes, w to be projected on the plane and the plane vector is basically the sum of these two vectors so so this is well known right parallelogram law of vectors so if i have this some parallelogram if i look at the sum of these two vectors this will create a parallelogram right right this will create a parallelogram you know the parallelogram right last one to adding two vectors so if you had two vectors what will it happen where will it go it will go from the below and it will become from u bar plus v bar okay sum of two vectors you can just simply take an example 1 0 comma 1 and 0 uh, 1 comma 0 so if you add the two vectors it will be 1 comma 1 sir so the yellow uh, dotted line on this uh, plane so those mm -hmm. that is uh, what is that that is not uh, error right or that is error no 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 that is not the error this w projected on u u dash is this this w projected on v dash is that those are lines so we'll project w on u w on space and add uh, those two vectors sir Projecting yes. vectors. Yes, yes. To get the so point. So th that will project W onto the space. So, so projecting on the vector and projecting on the space are different concepts. Of course, right? Projecting on a line and projecting on a space. Projecting on a line. If you project this particular line onto this line, it will be like uh, the projection will come, which is the scalar of. That particular vector v dash, some scalar, it will lie on that line. And projecting onto a space necessarily not to be projected on these vectors at all. So that is why this third vector comes into the picture. You just see it as a 3D picture. If you just drop that W, or if you just put a torch here, torch light here. So where will the shadow go? Here, right? it will not project on v, v v dash bar or nor u dash bar it will project uh, on some point here which is v dash bar plus u dash bar it will be that it will be the sum of these two vectors and you if you project this w on to v dash bar it just becomes a 2d 2d case 
just like this how do you project this is how we project you project on to the line and that projection is actually a scalar multiple of q bar that's it this is the scalar this is that scalar multiple alpha and this is just multiplies with u bar and it will lie on the same line okay so here what we did is we projected w bar onto the line b dash bar and we projected w bar onto the line u dash bar and finally we projected w onto the space that was spanned by u dash and v dash which is this silver space silver plane okay we have done three projections here where two projections are onto the lines and one final projection onto the space and it turns out that the projection happened on the space uh, will be the sum of two projections individual which is the error sir which is the error error which, yeah. which is the error huh? this one is yeah. the error from here to here this vector is the error for the vertical line mm -hmm. this vertical line is the error so those are the so adding line. these two projections will do the middle line which is the uh, huh. the extended one mm. okay and then so we part. subtracted from the w uh, bar w. that that's yeah. the error right w bar okay. minus the projection is what error is then we will finally get the vector which is uh, orthogonal but, to both of these vectors. Bo both of these vectors correct okay so that's how uh, you should get that's how you will get so okay. hmm. this is also like creating a matrix with the u and v as the columns and projecting w on the yeah. column space of the matrix yeah. ha, ha, ha. correct correct Okay, but so but you will get the projection there. You will get the projection there. But we need the error here, error vector, not the projection. See, projection is this, the sum. This is not what we want. We want a vector that is perpendicular to these two. And I know that error vector is perpendicular to the projection. So I will compute the error vector. So error vector will be W bar minus this projection. OK? So that is a, that that red red line is what I am thriving for this red line. So, sir, uh, subtracting this uh, projections from the actual vectors th that is only the essence of Gram-Smith process, right? Ha ha ha. Right. Okay. So so he will slowly uh, take the error vectors, take each and every error vector, and take the norm uh, divided with the norm. To make it normal, normalized. Okay, that's how we will proceed. For the fourth uh, line, I can't draw it here, but for the fourth line, that particular line is a projected to this particular uh, three-dimensional space. So these three lines will create a three-dimensional space, and the fourth uh, line will project onto this space. And we compute the projection. Projection will be this u dash u dash plus v dash plus w dash if i say this is w dash the projection will happen something like u dash plus v dash plus w dash and i need the error so i will i will subtract it from the original fourth vector and i will move forward okay let me do one example let's stop this uh, I hope uh, you got some understanding be behind this Gram-Smith process. Instead of just mugging up the formula, even though you forget uh, the formula, if you know the projections, uh, if you can do the projections, you can directly derive that and during the exam also. It's a very nice explanation. But, uh, I felt it was moderate, but OK. Uh, let me just share my other screen. Yeah. So, so using that Gram-Smith method, now whatever we discussed, 
I have to create an ortho normal basis for R3 by taking this Z1. So let's come back to this uh, uh, diagonalization. Sorry, Skars theorem, right? We are at Skars theorem. So what I what we have to do is we have the matrix A with me. First, I have to do compute the eigenvalues and take one eigenvalue, name it lambda one. And corresponding eigenvector you just find. After finding the corresponding eigenvector z1, you just take, you just uh, divide it with the norm of z1 and call it z prime or something. Okay. So you just normalize it. So after finding it, you just normalize it. Normalize z1. So what you have to do is uh, z1 divided by norm z1 so i'll call it as uh, z1 bar so z1 bar take that z1 bar as a set now extend z1 bar to some z1 bar comma some vector u some vector v so this this uh, extension this extension how do you extend is use Gram Smith process. Okay. So use that and get this u and v. So now you will have three vectors with you. Okay. Three vectors. Hello, sir. Huh. Hello, sir. Here, z1 prime, hmm. we know only z1 prime, but u and v, we are also taking. So u and v are also known here. No, no, not known. That is what I am saying. Use this Gram Smith method and find u and v. Only one, Z1 prime, we can find U and V also, sir. Uh, see, okay. Maybe I will just take Z1 prime yeah. uh, with uh, E2 and E3. Yes, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. So now Z1 prime, E2, E3, and using uh, this Gram Smith process, just extend it to. Z1 prime, Z1 prime U. U V. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No. Uh, so Z1 prime should not be in the span of E2 and E3. Aha. Uh -huh. That is that is there. That is that is see Z1 prime E2 E3 are linearly independent to each other. Okay. Yes, sir. Oh. Okay, if Z1 prime is in some E1, E2, E3, just simply take the other two. Either E1 or E3 or something like this. Z1 prime is a scalar multiple of any one of the standard uh, vector. Instead of that vector, you take the other two vectors. That's it. Very simple. Okay. So that is that is there. Now you will get you will get the ortho normal. We are not done yet. This is just the starting. Okay. Now I will write my U1 or uh, the first. Uh, U matrix where each of the column has Z1 prime U and V. Okay, so this is my U1, and what happens is uh, what happens is I will tell you directly if I take this U1 star times A times U1 you will end up getting like this, something like this. Lambda 1, stars are some values. And the first column, I will be worrying about the first column only. There will be some star, 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 star. So you'll get this. So this connection, it is in the lecture slides or in the lecture also. Uh, we don't need it for uh, calculation purpose. That is why I'm skipping that. So you just, you just have to get this U1, first of all. This is important. And for getting this U1, you need this uh, Gram Smith uh, process in order to find that orthonormal basis. That is important. Then, once you get this, this will convert it into like this. And after that, I will, con I will consider this particular matrix. You will consider this particular matrix because I, I still need to make this zero. Right? right? I am still in the halfway process. I will consider this and I will just name it as B 
and now the step 3 will be like this step 3 so this is step 3 this is step 4 step 4 will be now consider matrix b and repeat step 1 to step Maybe repeat step one and step two. That is up. So if I do that, so I have to just repeat. Repeat means again within the subparts, it will be like first part will be I have to find the eigenvalues. Eigenvalues of P. Okay, you have to find this. And out of the uh, two or any eigenvalues you get you just take one value say lambda 2 is your eigenvalue and again it's corresponding eigen so i have to find some z2 which is corresponding eigen eigen uh, vector and that two yeah this is there now what you do is you just have to normalize it again normalize that to call it z2 prime z2 divided by norm z2 and then what uh, once you normalize it again the step two is like uh, you just uh, create a basis Here there are only two. You you just need this. Is a basis. So observe uh, now B is just two cross two. So B can be any two cross two matrix, not necessarily Hermitian or no 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 no, right? no 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 no. This is not even a Hermitian thing coming into the picture. There is no Hermitian coming into the picture. Okay. Okay. So Z Z two prime. E2 will form a basis and you extend this basis uh, to get some. Z2 Sir, is it possible w. to solve an example of this? Or uh, I will I will do the example also. But uh, I'm just writing it because I will just share this PDF, right? So you just need the method also. Sir, See, in the exam, what will be asked of from this uh, concept? Or oh, I mean Social lengthy concept actually. Uh, this this would be good if I discuss this in revision section. Uh, not very difficult. Okay, don't don't expect that we will ask you something very. We will just ask you. Maybe tricky. We will just ask, we will give the options no? from options. I will give you hints also, like some some shortcuts what you can follow. But before going to the shortcuts, you should know the standard approach, right? For exam point of view, during the revision session, I will give you shortcuts. Don't worry, sir. Hmm. Sir, if the matrix is Hermitian, then we can use. The standard method like we can the unit the columns of the unitary matrix will be the eigenvectors hmm. it will be the diagonal matrix diagonal matrix the, yeah, yeah 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 okay so, if it is not dormition or real symmetric then we have to use this process hmm. okay okay so, sir how do you choose the lambda in the case like, any any lambda any lambda yeah. Oh, it's not like lambda the greatest one. Value. Uh, not necessarily. Not necessary here, but uh, during uh, singular value decomposition, we maintain the order, but not here. And it's good if you take uh, some order or anything, if you follow some order or anything. You might get some simpler uh, vectors. Corresponding eigenvectors might be very easy to compute. Okay, but it's not necessary. And uh, extend it to this, and this is extend 
using gram smith again Sir, huh. so this Z two prime and W will be the columns of U. Or the normal, not U. I will tell you. So this is this will become again an or the normal basis for R two. So now we are in still R two, but I want uh, my whatever I create to be in R three. So what I will do is, I will just simply so I will just do this this thing p star some b some p will give me again. I am not going to prove this, but it will give you something. This this zero and this something. This something is actually lambda three, but let it be something as of now. So what what this is is. Uh, Okay, where p is this thing, z one, z two prime, and w. Okay, so you you just take a p matrix p, and just take that p to be column the columns of that p to be this vector. These are the normal vectors, and you just take the uh, p star. Uh, B P, and you will observe that again the column will turn out to be lambda two and zero. The first column will turn out like this. Now what you do is, I defined U one right here. Important bold case. Now this is important. The next next thing is this. This U two. You have to write in such a way that. It will become a three cross three. So for that, you just take it like this. So you just add a column and a row for this p. So it will become three cross three. So something like this will be z two prime. This will be w. Okay, this u two is important. And u two star is you can easily see u two star also. It will just take the transpose. Now Z two prime will become that uh, row, uh, this row, and W will become come uh, below. It will become P star. So it will be like one zero 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 Z two prime transpose W transpose. Okay. Uh, now we are done. So once we have u two, u one, u two star and u one star, you just have to compute u two star, u one star, a, u one. So you have all these things. Once you do this product, so you see the inside u two star, the inside will become something like. As I discussed above, lambda one zero zero, so some stars, and I just said this as b right, and u two, and this u two star, this this, it will become. So u two star we have one zero 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 p star, lambda one zero zero star star b, and this as one zero 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 zero. This u two is this. Now, if I do the product, I will get something like one zero 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 zero. And the one. This this will not be zeros. This will be some stars, and this will be p star b p. So this this these are just matrices. Okay, if you do the product also, it will come inside that. Don't be like, uh, how can you write matrix inside a matrix? We can actually write okay, lambda two star zero and some star. Later, uh, you will see that uh, this star is nothing but the lambda three, the third eigen vector, because the trace is same, right? 
the trace of uh, our matrix A will be the sum of the eigenvalues. So here also lambda 1 plus lambda 2 plus something else. Uh, that something else should be the third lambda value. So this, this creates an upper triangular matrix. Now, uh, small example uh, for that particular thing. So how do I take matrix inside a matrix and how does it being represented? So if I have one from two minus one, zero, zero. So treat this as B now, one minus one, three, two. So this is A. Oh, this is not A. Okay, this is one some matrix. But I said uh, previously treat this as B. Right, B is one minus one, three, two. And uh, here, what I am doing, uh, I have I am multiplying it with one zero zero something, right? So let me just take one. 0, 0, 0, 0. And this P has something like uh, 1, minus 1, 2, 1. OK, now this, OK, maybe for simplicity, 0, 0, same order. In order to have the same order, 1, let this be P. And our B is uh, 1, 2, minus 1, 1. If I do the product, you see 1 multiplied by 1, 0. Or 1 multiplied by 1 is 1, 0, 0, 0. So this will be 1. And 1 multiplied by 2, one, 0 multiplied by this, and 0 multiplied by this. And that will stay as 2. Again, the last uh, entry of the first row will also be 1. And here, the second row, 0 multiplied by 1, it is 0. 1 multiplied by 0, minus 1 multiplied by 0, it will be 0. Similarly, this, this thing, 0 multiplied by 1 is 0, zero uh, 3 multiplied by 0 plus 2 multiplied by 0, it will be 0. So you see, this, 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 this is not changing. In the above also, it will not change. 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. If it is lambda 1, some star and star, it will be like lambda 1, star, star, 0, 0. That's it. That will not change. So the other stuff, you see what happened. So this is 0 times 2, uh, this entry. This will be 0 times 2, which will be of no use. The next thing is 1 times 1 and minus times minus 1, which is 1 times 1 and minus times 1 is 2. So this will be 2. And likewise, you see the next entry, 0 times 1 and 1 times 2. So 0 times 1 again will vanish. 1 times 2 is 2 plus minus 1 times 1. 1 this will be 2 minus 1, 1. So similarly, you see the this entry, 0 times 2, it will vanish. So 3 times 1 plus 2 times minus 1, 1. one. And the last one is 0 times 1, 3 times 2 is 6, 2 Eight. times 1 is 2. So whatever the matrix we got here, whatever the entries we got here, you see 2, 1, 1, 8. If you do P times B, 1, 2, 1, 1. Just do 1 times 1 is 1 plus minus 1 times minus 1 is 1, it will be 2. 1 times 2 is 2, minus 1 times 1 is 1, so 1. So 3 times 1 is 3, 2 times minus 1 is minus 2, 3 minus 2 is 1, 3 times 2 is 6, 2 times 1 is 2, 6 plus 2 will be here. So you see 2, 1, 1, 8 is same as this. So that is what I have uh, written there. So if I do the product of this, it will become one z some lambda 1, star star 0, 0, p star b. And again, if you do product with this, you will again get uh, this 1, 0, 0, 0 is there, right? 
this will van this will again create the same structure lambda 100 star star but what the only change will come at uh, p star b will become p star bp that's it so this i can write sir what is the goal of the process which process that the, we we are trying to get the uh, upper triangular matrix right okay hmm. so this this is this this product we got it as uh, we got it as some upper triangular matrix that means we got like this some u2 star u1 star a u1 u2 we got it as upper triangular matrix now you you just have to do this this i can write it as u1 u2 whole star a u1 u2 t now what you set is set u to be u1 u2 now u star will be u1 u2 whole star now substituting we get uh, u star a u is t you multiply u star to the right side on both sides uh, you will get u star a u u star is equals to t u star okay and this u u star will go to identity Why? Because U is unitary matrix. Mm. U forms an unitary matrix. You can check that. I didn't say it, but it forms an unitary matrix. And you do uh, left multiplication of uh, U on both sides. To do that, uh, this will also get go to identity. And finally, you will get A, U, T, U. okay so this is something you don't need actually you just uh, have to find what all you have to find is this okay, i will just put stars you have to pi find lambda 1 the first eigen value and its corresponding eigen vector then this using gram smith process you just have to get the orthonormal basis once you get the orthonormal basis you first define u1 construct u1 so this is important then take this matrix b and after taking taking this matrix b then find the eigen values of that b and take one eigen value of b lambda 2 and find its corresponding eigen vector again once you get that uh, vector you just normalize it and you form a basis and extend that uh, basis to orthonormal basis using the gram smith process and then doing that you just need this also maybe small star this p also you just get the p then p star b p will be like this so using this small p you construct u2 that's it that is what you want so you construct u2 by like one zero 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 p and then you are done so you have u2 you are not done you are uh, done 80 percent you have u2 with you u1 with you once you have u1 you will have u1 star also u2 star also you have a using all these five you can find t just take the product of all the five addresses you will get the t that's it you will have all a u t u star so that u u also is like u1 times u2 so this is also important so, so lambda 2 and lambda 3 are eigen ah lambda 2 and la lambda 3 are eigen values ultimately you will get something like this u as u1 times u2 this t is an upper triangular matrix where the diagonal entries are the eigen values And this U is unitary. Okay. 
So if you guys have time, I will just do an example. So this U will contain the eigenvectors of AS columns. Hmm? No, sir. This U will ultimately contain the eigenvectors of AS columns. Is it? Eigenvectors of A? No. Okay. Please uh, only if A is a Hermitian. Right. Ah, ah. See here, not necessarily. Okay. So, well, I do one case permission. Ah, ah. So, so it's it's on your request. Do I have to do an example or? Yes. Okay. So give me the matrix. Now. So any random example shall we pick? That will screw up, I guess. If we don't have proper uh, eigen values. So I just I just need one A. Are there any uh, questions in week five? Let me just check. You can take one, sir. Ah, uh, sir has taken already. Sir has done right. Do I have to take the same one? Ah, uh -huh. I'm just checking. Are there any? Sir, can I provide one matrix in the uh -huh. Q quiz one? Aha, uh -huh, you can draw it. Uh, column wise, three to four. Okay. Two zero two. Hmm. Four two three. Okay. So, so in exam, we we were given some eigen vectors, and we were told to find this matrix. Uh -huh. Without any eigen values. Hmm. So. It, Please proceed with this one. Then I ah, I okay, okay. how to solve that question. Okay, okay. So 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 the very first step uh, I will do is I will find. What is the first step? Find the eigenvalue. Correct. So find the... There, are, there are four options and four matrices. Ah, uh, it is a bit lengthy, but. Uh, see, uh, the eigenvectors should be orthogonal to each other, right? You will get orthogonal to each other. They will be orthogonal to each other, right? linearly independent and orthogonal to each other. Sir, eigenvectors were given. Uh -huh. so the eigenvectors given, were given and, and we, were, we were supposed to answer what are the matrices for which the eigenvectors are given. So you just multiply one vector, you just take one vector, multiply it with uh, the matrix A, you should get uh, some scalar multiple of that particular vector, right? If, if, if they said minus 1, 2, 1 is an eigenvector, what does that eigenvector do? So that eigenvector will do minus 1, 2, 1, will do some something like some alpha, minus alpha, yeah. 2 alpha, alpha right uh, you just have to check for one and this will show you whether it is providing you that or not okay so let us continue by computing the eigen values and let us let us be let us do this diagonalization stuff okay so i didn't even do diagonalization so i don't maybe Saturday session, I am the one who is taking. Maybe I'll take some time of week five, solve with us to this, and solve uh, the diagonalization of Hermitians also, uh, which is the spectral theorem also I will do, and also week six also I will do that. As well. Okay, so let let's do this example for eigenvalues. Uh, I suggest everyone just try try to get the eigenvalues. So this is what we do. We uh, uh, subtract lambda. Two, four, two, three minus lambda, and we will take the determinant of this and equate it to zero. 
correct and this will be like 3 minus lambda multiplied with minus lambda 3 minus lambda minus 4 minus 2 2 times 3 minus lambda minus 8 plus 4 4 minus 4 plus 4 lambda is zero. From here, 3 minus lambda, and this is minus 3 lambda plus lambda square minus 4. If someone found out, you can directly tell me. Don't wait for me to solve, it will kill the time. Okay, so this is that. From here, I just simply have minus 9 lambda plus 3 lambda square plus 3 lambda square minus lambda cube minus 1 plus 4 lambda this is all for this and then there is minus 12 plus 4 lambda plus 16 this I can simply write this code. I think uh, something is getting common, right? Lambda plus one is lambda is equals to minus one. Looks like a root for me. Instead of doing this, let's write this. So this is three minus lambda. And this is lambda square minus 3 lambda minus 4 that I can write it as lambda plus 1 into lambda minus 4. And uh, this is 2 times of. And again, there will be minus 2, so this will be plus 4 times of. 2 times of uh, 1 plus lambda. And this will be plus 4 times plus 4, 16 times of 1 plus lambda. And this will be 20 plus lambda. Twenty times lambda plus 1. This is 0. So lambda plus 1, if I take common, so this will be 3 minus lambda of lambda minus 4. That's 20 is 0. So lambda is equals to minus one is a root. Okay. Has anyone solved this? Yes, sir. You should have told me enough. Okay. So as I got lambda minus one, what I have to do the next next step is what should I do? I have to construct an eigenvector from the basis. Construct, extend this one to make a basis. First of first all, find eigenvector. First eigenvector. Corresponding, vector. To corresponding eigenvector, right? So this this three minus uh, this the matrix will become two. A minus lambda I will become two two four. Two minus one two two four. Two one two. Lambda is minus one, right? So this will be four. So four to four. So X one, X two, X three. So this looks like uh, so this is what I said. Sometimes this is what happens. Minus lambda squared plus four lambda minus twelve plus twenty. This is plus eight plus seven. This is again. This will be lambda plus one into lambda minus eight. So sorry, lambda plus eight into lambda minus. 
no lambda plus 1 into lambda minus 8 okay so this this actually uh, we will get like lambda is minus 1 and lambda is 8 and lambda minus 1 repeats twice so if it is repeating twice you will get uh, multiple eigen vectors okay so it's better take 8 if you take 8 you will get a unique uh, eigen vector it's not that you can't take this you can take this but again getting uh, you will get a combination some combination you will get something like equation which is not solvable uniquely solvable so that's where again you will start and you have to guess either one plus one or zero instead of that i just wanted to take eight so i'm taking lambda as eight if i take eight now it will become minus five minus eight minus five Now this is uniquely solvable. And if I do this, I again I, I use rho equilion or reduce rho equilion form. Equilion form and solve this. If someone solved, just give me the answer. If I I, I don't want to solve here. You are making me to do everything. I want the answer. Okay, anyone solved or no? Just tell me. If solved, just give me or else I will do. No? No, yes. Everyone so tired or what? Solving, but not yet there. Okay. Okay, solving also. Just solve it me then. Once you solve, just tell me the answer. So this is like uh, minus five to four. Using R two, I can remove R three. See, twenty eighteen. Uh, 4 minus 9, 2 minus seven, 2. Uh, sir, R1 and R2 will repeat. Like if I do R1 plus R3, mm -hmm. then uh, R1 and R2 will be linearly dependent. How? How? What should I do? R1 plus R3. R1, I have to change it to R1 plus R3, is it? Right. Um, okay, I, I... You'll get minus I, 1, 4, minus, minus 1. Minus 1, 4, minus 1. Yes. Correct. Okay, that is better. Then. Mm -hmm. 4 to minus 5. Okay. Plus 1. Minus one only, right? Minus five plus four, it will be minus one. Uh, okay. Oh. What's wrong? Okay, nothing is wrong. I can have this also minus five to four. I can have bottom one as minus one, four minus one. Now I can remove directly the last row. The last row zero 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 two minus eight uh, two. I can actually reduce it also one minus four one. One minus four one zero zero zero. Now uh, Five times this add to the above. Zero. Five times below minus twenty, adding above minus eighteen. 
nine one minus four one zero zero zero. So now we got x one, x two, x three. We will be get uh, zero zero zero. This will be minus two x two should be equals to x three. It's one equation. And then x one minus four x two plus x three is zero. We can simply substitute minus uh, two x two. Will give me minus x one minus x two. This will give me x two is equals to minus sorry sorry, sorry. x two as minus two x three. Now x one will give me six x two. So just take a random. Uh, if I take x two to zero, if I set x two zero, I will get zero zero zero, which I don't want. If I set x two to one, I will get The vector is uh, six one minus two. Correct. Those who solved it says now you can tell. You are like exam. Me, we solve it. Then, now we solve it. Is this correct? Am I getting full marks? Yes, sir. Thanks. Okay, this is the eigen vector, and now not done. Job not done yet. We have to normalize this. So this is Z one. So Z one prime is thirty six plus one thirty seven plus four forty one. Oh my God. This will be six by root forty one, one by root forty one. So we will write out that six one minus two divided by norm of z one that will be square root of forty one. Okay, so this is uh, the first. Will be the first vector. In ortho normal basis, okay. So take this. Six one minus two, one by root forty one. This is uh, Z one prime. Which is in Gram-Smith uh, process. Take this as v1, and your v2 take it as something like zero one zero, and v3 as zero zero. Okay. So now what I have to do? I have to do. Uh, already v1 is u1. U1 is v1 already. We don't need to do anything because that is already uh, of unit length. Now for u two, I have to subtract v two minus v two dot product with u one times u one. So v two is zero one zero minus v two. V two is zero one zero. So if I take the transpose. Zero one zero times u one. U one is just the v one, which is six one minus two, and there is one scalar root forty. And outside this, there is u one again. U one is just the v one, which is six one minus. So from here, zero one zero minus. If I do this, zero times six is zero. One times one is one, and zero times minus two is zero. So, one by root forty-one will stay as it is. So this this will be one, just one. So one by root forty-one times six one minus two. 
Now, if I subtract this, but it will be root, not root, no, only 41. One by 41, no. Why? The, the U1 also will have one by root 41. The outside the bracket, that will also have one by root 41. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah, thanks. So this is, there will be one by root 41. Correct. So this will be 41. Thanks. So if this is 41, uh, now the final one will be 0 minus 6 by 41. This will be minus 6 by 41. And 1 minus 1 by 41, which is 40 by 41. 40 by 41. And the last one is 0 minus, uh, so 0 plus 2 by 41. 2 by 41. 2 by 41. Now this will be, I can write it as 1 by 41 now. Minus 6, 40. Hmm. Now we have to normalize this. This is just the perpendicular vector we got. Okay, this is not the actual vector. So this is not u2. So this is what I said w2. Now, in order to get u2, what you do, have to do is w2 divided by norm of so that will be 1 by 41 minus 6. 42 and this is square root of minus 6 by 41 whole square plus 40 by 41 whole square plus 2 by 41 whole square. It is 41 and denominators will get cancelled out. We will just have something like whatever this has 36 plus 1600 plus 4. People who have calculators, can you just quickly uh, do this? 36, 1600 plus 36, 1636 plus 4, 1640. So I will have 1 by root 1640 of minus 642. So this is an unit vector which is perpendicular to the first vector. So you can cross verify. How you can cross verify is you take the dot product between this and this, you will get zero. Okay, just do the cross verification and let me know. You can you can check this. Yes, sir. This minus one. thirty-six plus forty and minus four, so it is zero. So you're getting zero. Yes. So yes, you sir. you will get zero. So that means u1 and u2 are perpendicular to each other as well as u1 is of unit length, u2 is of unit length. And now you should proceed to find the third one. How do I find the third one? This is uh, w3 is v3 minus v3 dot product with uh, u1 whole times u1 minus the same v3 dot product with u2 u2 so v3 i have uh, e3 minus so we take this as smaller row vector u1 again it is minus 6 minus 6 sorry 6 1 minus 2 6 1 minus 2 so this u1 have again 1 by root 41. So overall it will have 1 by 41. And this, this is a scalar times. So I'm going to get 6, 1 minus 2. Minus v3. v3 is 0, 0, 1. So I have to write that. This order. And dot product with 6, minus 6, 40, and 2. Okay, so this is this. And this is multiplied by... So again, I will have this uh, root 1640 twice. So here I will have outside U2 also, I will have uh, 
1640 that will become 1640 and overall it will be multiplied by minus 642 okay if you do this now uh, this this will anyone done so this this will be minus 2 so minus 2 of uh, so this will become plus 212 by 41 of 61 minus 2 Okay. And this will become again 2, 2, minus 2 by 1, 6, 4, 0, minus 6, 42. Okay, this is like uh, 12 by 41 plus 12 by 1, 6, 4, 0. So the first one is 12 by 41 plus... 12 by 1640. The second one is uh, 2 by 41 minus 80 by 1640. And the last one is 1 minus 4 by 41 minus 4 by 1640. And you do this. So you have done, you can tell me. This will come come like uh, outside. You will have one by forty one times one six four zero. So we can take the LCM. Uh -huh. LCM That's is so. one six four zero. LCM is one six four zero. Okay, forty one. Yes, sir. Forty one. Forty one forty, sir. Forty one forty is one six four zero. No. Is that so? Yeah. Correct, correct. So forty one forty. So so this will be one six four zero only, and twelve times uh, forty is four eighty. Four eighty plus twelve is uh, four ninety two. So this is four ninety two, and this is forty times two will 80 be eighty minus eighty minus zero. zero. So this will become zero. And this will be 1640 minus, uh, so this is 1640 by 1640. Uh, this is minus uh, 4 into 16, 16, 40, 160. 160 minus 4. So it is uh, 1476. Uh, one 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 yes, sir. Okay, so this is what it is. Yeah. Okay, we have done this. So now you have to do that uh, norm thing. So this will be like uh, four nine two zero one four seven six, and you will get something like square root of. Sir, can we four, remove, uh, remove uh, four ninety two as a common part as well? One zero three it will become. Oh, is that so? Thank you. 4923, sir. 1476. Yes, yes. Looks like, yeah. Yeah, we can write. So this is, this is what you said, right? 492 whole square will come outside. And 492 will get cancelled out. And you will get... Uh, Okay, you can write it like this, 492, and this is 1, and this is 3, this is 1, and this is 3. So this, this scalar will get cancelled out. So this is 492 by 1640, but even the same thing we will have it in the denominator. 492 by 1640 whole square, and 492 times 3 whole square by 1640 so this 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 will get cancelled out so we will be remained with 1 plus 3 square it is 1 by root 10. so even here it will cancel out it is, is it 1640 2 2 will get cancelled out right so, 410 square root of 410 2 will get cancelled out this will be square root of 410 minus 3 
21 so i should have used square root of 4 too. so these are so now we got all three unit uh, all three uh, vectors which have length 1 and also orthogonal to each other again you can cross check so what are all those three this is one this is the other and the first one is this. if you take product of any two vectors it will give you zero you can just quickly cross check and now we got our first matrix u1 okay so the big big star the this star u this one this star we got now. we move to step three now oh i used u sir yes and what should i use some u underscore something some 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 dirty symbol I use. So now I have to construct U1, which will be that U1 and U2 and U3. Okay. You take all these three vectors, keep them as columns, and that will create our first u1, so which is half part of our unitary matrix. And if you if I put that here, it will be like this. So the first one is six by two forty one. Maybe I will write the last one first. It is here one by root ten, zero, three by root ten. And the top one is minus 6 by root 4, 10. Sorry, minus 3 by root 4, 10. 20 by root 4, 10. And 1 by root 4, 10. And this will be minus, this is minus 2 by root 41, I guess. 1 by root 4. So this is the U. Let me see how many are present. Oh, it's 370. Okay. Okay. Uh, how many Sir, of you have understood till here? Are Sir, we going yes. to compute till T? Like uh -huh. I, and, I, and, I understand. <laughs> so from here, I will leave it on to you guys. Because from here, it's just a repeat process. See, the, you we got u1. Now you will you you know u star also as this is real. U star is nothing but u transpose, correct? So u1 star is nothing but a u1 transpose. You just take the transpose of this six by root forty one, one by root forty one minus two by root forty one minus three by root four ten, twenty by root four ten. 1 by root 4, 10. One by root 10, 0, 3 by root 10. So this is u1, u1 star for you and u1 for you. This is okay. Till here it is okay. Now the next thing is, what is the next steps? Once you get u1, you just have to put that uh, once you get u1 you have to compute u1 star a u1 and you will get like this okay you will get something like some matrix like this and from there you just repeat the process take the below matrix b and again repeat the process and you know what this time for matrix b you will get the repeated root minus 1 Okay, so if you guys have energy, I can show you that also. 
or if you want to try it out yourself try it out we will meet on saturday and we will continue our discussion sir okay. we will try it out sir i yeah. will try it out sir. okay okay uh, so every other people should be like milin at least at least half of you should to take it as a challenge just everything is in front of you now so i have shown you half way and you just have to repeat the process with smaller matrix now you don't need to you are not having 3 cross 3 which i computed you will have 2 cross 2 matrix in the exam huh no no in the exam i will give y cross y oh hello sir hello hmm sir uh, actually uh, just regarding the quiz one or uh, like uh, is it uh, like possible to discuss one or two questions i'm having a doubt actually yeah, because uh, apparently the answers given in the solution are uh, not matching uh, with uh, whatever we have done uh, as per our calculations See, this is what i i know you are not interested to study or uh, to uh, maybe week 5 weeks weeks you are still in quiz 1 no? what are those questions just tell me let, let, let me just take i we saw nothing no errors okay let me see what you have from your side sir uh, actually uh, there's a question of convergence of algorithms hmm. uh, so in that uh, when we find the uh, final answer that time hmm. it is coming uh, to like x0 that is it's converging to you know 1 comma 3 while the answer that is marked in that uh, set is uh, 0 comma 0 which is you know on, i mean absolutely no connection between them so uh may i know the question some starting ending um yeah i think sir i'll just uh, should i read out or something ha 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 just just read out the starting starting lines oh yeah just a minute yeah so acha can i just got it got yeah yeah uh, sir i think it is like uh, f uh, you know can, uh, like f from r2 to r xn plus 1 xn minus mm -hmm, x So, sir, uh, actually, one person has given the solution in the discussion forum also, and that mm -hmm. also converges to one comma three. So, I mean, I don't know why it's marked zero comma zero, and it carries four marks. So, <laughs> that is the. Uh, oh. Yeah. So that But is why. Huh? So one comma three. Any counter arguments? Who has given zero comma zero? not the ones who guessed it 0 comma 0 but i need solid proofs who has done and got 0 comma 0 any counter arguments from anyone or uh, you guys are supporting prithika sir actually it was progressively decreasing until it exactly so mm -hmm. i just no it is 0 comma 0 it is 0 comma 0 Yeah, it was like I don't know. It was not halving, but I don't know. I, I don't remember exactly. It was like reducing by a percentage. Yes, sir. It was reducing. Uh, it was. It was not. It was not coming to one comma. That's what I thought. But sir, in the discussion forum, one person has given the solution, which uh, every every value converges to one comma three over there. Okay, maybe I will, I have to check. Uh, sir, should we find some right? limit for that? Limit as n tends to infinity. Infinity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. If we draw to infinity, then we get one comma three. Oh, you are going to get one comma three, yeah? Yes, sir. If we draw to infinity, we get a geometric progression of one comma two in the x value, and uh, for the second one, we get three times of the same. Oh. sir and one more a uh, general doubt i'm having actually mm -hmm. so whatever answer i have entered in the uh, text box if you have written like up to two decimals but uh, mm -hmm. like by mistake i put to three but other all answers are in, within that limit so then i'll get a mark or i won't of course you will get mark no? no no i have written up to, i have calculated to three decimals but uh -huh. there is a special so specified to two so see we will give range right if we ask Is my screen still visible? If the answer is 0.72, and we will ask for two decimal places, and we will give range as some 0.70 to 0.74. Yeah, 
so if you have given something like 0.7 to 4 or 5 that lies inside this range right yes sir yes uh, so it will you'll get marks so a, okay. any real number uh, between 0.70 to 0.74 will get marks okay 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 uh, okay then uh, i will stop here i will just continue uh, on saturday okay and Thank in you, between uh, i maybe i just request everyone to solve that solve and come next time don't sit uh, in front of me and let him solve okay okay sir or yes, else sir. Uh, next time i will only solve <laughs> i will solve this and come directly i will give values just like in the lectures i'll just say ki you just solve it and this is what you'll get we'll solve sir and after that we'll cross check the answer ha uh ha -huh. maybe maybe cross checking is good uh, better mm -hmm. or uh, if see this is what it does if i do solve uh, sit solving each and every small things it will kill time and i may not be able to discuss what okay so i am left with uh, many concepts and i have only one class i don't know how i will complete i'll see sir saturday uh, you will take the session or i will i, I will take saturday i will take uh i yeah i will take the session that is why i will start i will continue it from here i'll start continuing it from here okay saturday it is from 4 to 6 right and uh, do you guys have any uh, uh, classes after 6 uh ho gaya ho gaya sandar okay okay uh, if no i might extend some half an hour or one hour just like this. Yeah, saturday it is 9 to 11 no not 4 to 6 9 to 11 9 to 11 is dbms 4 to 6 is ml 4 to 6 is yeah. ml yes yes ah i'm sorry yeah you're right uh -huh. even okay uh, so if it is 4 to 6 i might extend half an hour because of the contents i see i have to cover many things i have to cover week 6 also okay uh, after that pdsa is there no pdsa is there huh? what are the timings pdsa 6 to 8 uh can we start at 3 Will it be okay? Yeah, that that's that possible. Yes, sir. Will Please. that be possible to all? Uh, will that be okay to all? Yes, sir. Okay, those who attend seriously, yes, uh, if if you guys say yes, we can start at uh, three. Even two and... to four, we can take two to. Ah, uh, two and no, all. No, sir. Three. Two and all, I have to take lunch. Okay, three. Three o'clock. Okay. Three to six is enough, sir. Three to six is fine. That that's sufficient. Okay. <laughs> and uh, yeah next next lecture i won't be doing this uh, complete calculations and all so even i will come up with the simple uh, matrices so that it will it will be easily solvable just to show you how this is done okay <clears throat> okay then uh, meet you on saturday and have a good night sir this this material you are going to give when or uploading it shall i upload right away uh, if i upload right away i will upload it right away and next time i will upload it again complete thing oh yeah that's right will okay. that be okay oh, ah yeah. uh, okay that is there then okay that is that, that uh, i will do that i will upload this now where and uh, uh, supplementary contents where usually you will get the right. live session notes right. thank you sir okay thanks thanks a lot guys all right all right thank you sir